Hello, welcome to another edition of The Recap. You're with me, Jamin Hutton. Today we're looking at argumentative or persuasive essay writing. This video is sponsored by a past student of mine, brilliant youngster, Avinash Ramsewak. So let's go into it. Persuasive essay writing. So this slide aims to give you a little heads up about what can actually be in your CSEC English A paper too. So section A, B, C, and D are the sections that would be in the paper two of the exam. So the English A exam has four sections. A would focus on summary writing. Section B can be one of four things. It can be a letter or an email. It can be a statistical report or a report. It can also be a memo or so on. Uh, the section C will be your short story and the section D will be your persuasive essay or what you might know as your argumentative essay. So this channel will focus on all of these. There are videos on summary, letter and email, statistical report, short story. And now finally, I'm concluding this series by doing a video on persuasive essay writing. I have suggested times there, that is when you are writing, you should try to finish within that time I'm suggesting that you finish there. I will give you a good average of how you're going to finish overall on the day of the CXC exam, making sure you answer all questions. Based on the new syllabus, these are the marks that will be allotted for each of these sections. So. Summary writing is 25 marks, everything else 25 marks except your uh, section B, which is 30 marks. So you might want to make sure you have a good grasp of letter writing, statistical report writing, and report writing, just in case it comes. Good. Let's move on now into argumentative essay writing for the CSEC English A exams. Now let's get into writing. Like I've said in the past, the first thing to everything you write is the introduction. The first paragraph is the introduction. Now, you don't have to label it introduction, just write. Once you indent and you start writing your first paragraph, it's understood that the first paragraph is the introduction. Now, what is required of you in this introduction? The introduction aims to introduce generally to the audience the topic to which you're writing so it is going to say whether or not the topic is about global warming whether it's about abortion whether it's about tv versus books right so right off the bat you have to give a clear description of what a topic is then you have to acknowledge that the argument may have many sides and, of course, most pertinently, you have to say whether you think, whether the argument that you are t standing on, or the side of the argument you are standing on, is X or Y. What am I saying? Just simply say, the argument, or this purpose of this writing, is to show X, Y, Z. Let me give you some examples. So... I am going to write an argument or an essay on uh, abortion. And I'm saying abortion should be illegal. So, my introduction will give me an idea of what the topic is and the side to which I am arguing on. So, I'll give you an example now of what this introduction entails. Let's say, for instance, the topic is abortion. I'm going to write something like this as an introduction. For the last decade, abortion has gotten much attention in developed and in developing worlds, much to the point where it's a daily ritual. Some people may be described as pro-life, while others may describe themselves as pro-choice. However, this essay aims to clearly show why abortion should remain the choice of a woman. That's right off the head to tell you what an introduction should be like. So what it's going to do is going to show you a broad topic. The broad topic here would be abortion. Then it goes on to show you what the 
position on this topic is, what your position on this broad topic is. Some teachers might tell you, go on to list your main points. I am not going to tell you to do that. Once you say what your view is, it's good enough to be a guide throughout your essay. Alright, so you have to remember though that if you're choosing to say this, this essay will show us why abortion should be legal throughout the essay, you must stick to that point of abortion should be legal. You can change your point halfway and contradict yourself. You have to stick to one side of the argument. That's a big thing in the marking of the exam. So you cannot contradict yourself. To contradict yourself means you're going to move. You started by saying you will show why it should be legal. And then you go on to say how it should be legal. And it's against the, the Bible's principle. And yada, 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 yada. Hope you get the point I'm making. Now, the body of the essay is the meat of the matter. So, this is where now you score the most possible marks for your essay. So, the body is going to be made up of three points. Three points in three different paragraphs. What do I mean by that? The body is divided into three paragraphs. Three paragraphs, each of those paragraphs would have a separate point. So, three paragraphs for the body, one point, one new point in every paragraph. And with that new point in every paragraph, you have to go on now to explain fully that point. Think you know what I'm saying? Let's recap quickly. So, the body comes after the introduction. Three paragraphs will make up the body. In each of those paragraphs, you have to explain a fully different point in a complete way. So, you have to be formal. Remember, this thing is not abuse out. We ain't cussing out anybody. So, don't use too many strong adjectives. Be formal. Your audience is also a formal audience. right? So, e the point of each uh, paragraph is obviously going to be to convince and you're not going to convince anyone if you do any views and out. So how can you convince an individual or a reader? You can use examples, examples of what you're saying. So if you're saying that abortion is going to lead to a decrease in the population, give an example of that. What do I mean? And this is right off my head. Let's say, for instance, I'm saying, this is my second paragraph. In addition, you have to use your linking words. In addition, comma, abortion will obviously not help a growing population, full stop. You can't just say that sentence. You have to go on to explain what you mean by that. So if I am saying now, Abortion will not help a growing population. Full stop. I mean this. Take for instance, and I'm introducing that example there. Take for instance, if 50 women are going to have an abortion, it therefore means that that is 50 less babies in a country. You get the point? That's a small example. It's not the best example, but I'm giving you an example nonetheless. Anecdote would be a small story-like situation that you're giving as well. I'm sure your teachers would have helped you with that. I can probably do another video. I don't want to spend too long on it. But anecdotes, small story-like situation that adds to your point. Uh, statistics? Any numbers? Numbers that add to your point. Again, let's say the opposite side of the argument now, abortion. The opposite. So we are saying we should not do an abortion. Let's say your writing is going to sound something like this. Most pertinently, comma, an abortion should never be attempted by a woman 
despite how much she thinks that there is no hope for the child in this real world. Research has shown that four out of every nine women risk dying from an abortion. Full stop. So that four out of every five of over nine women risk dying from an abortion. Try not to let you you can use stats, you can fabricate your stats, you can make it up, right? But don't make it so obvious that you have made it up and made complete nonsense of yourself. Don't be so ridiculous that everybody knows you're lying. Don't go say 99% or 99 out of a hundred percent of women die. No, we all will know you're lying. But make it as though it's an interesting lie. All right? So let me say, let me rephrase it. Let's say, for instance, one out of every four women that have an abortion will die as a result of complications from that abortion. That's your use of your stats. Right? Your export sources is where you quote important people within your writing that adds to your point. Let's say Dr. Westford from the Georgetown Public Hospital says an abortion is wrong because once conception has occurred, there is a beating heart that leads to a life. So, that is an expert source because Dr. Westford is somebody who is in the field that knows. It's not the best because, of course, the little embryology would not support that. But you get the point I'm making. The point I'm making is simply that expert sources would be when you're adding people's name, doctors, psychologists, sociologists, anybody that would add to your point. Somebody would have done research in this area. right? So those are some of the things you can use. Some things you can also use would be things like definition. Definition always works. So you can start your essay by saying an abor abortion is defined as the intentional removing of a life source within a pregnant woman or the removal of a fetus or the killing of a fetus, whatever you choose to do. But you make it sound so fancy that you get a little point for it when you write your essay. Cause and effect is just simply one showing that one thing is leading to something else. So after you've given your topic sentence, that topic sentence now will go on to show that something is causing something else. So let's go. Let me give you an example of it based on what I've used before. Cause and effect. Uh, many women having abortions will obviously lead to a decrease in the country's population. Simply put, that's an example of cause and effect. Cause is the abortion, and the effect is a decrease in the country's population. So things like that you should try to alternate within your essay. When I say alternate, I, I do not mean the entire essay. The entire essay will not be giving all of these things. You have to give a definition. You have to give a, a cause and effect in every paragraph, a counter-argument in every paragraph, comparisons in every paragraph. No, it doesn't work like that. What you have to do is alternate it. If this first paragraph has a cause and effect, don't put it, don't put it in the next paragraph. If the first paragraph has a rhetorical question, don't do it again in the next paragraph. Skip it. Alternate. Cause and effect in the first paragraph. Okay, in the next paragraph I'll do a rhetorical question. Next paragraph I'll do a question and answering. Next paragraph I'll do a counter argument. S mix it up. M use an array of argumentative techniques. So next we have counter argument. The counter argument is probably my most favorite of them all. What the counter argument aims to do is to create uh, an atmosphere that makes a strong point not so strong anymore. So let's say you are on this side of the argument that says abortion should be legal. 
the opposite side of the argument would be what? Abortion should be illegal. So, when you are writing, you are writing a counter to the argument on the opposite side. You are writing a point that would make the other side seem not so important. Let's say abortion should be legal because it's a woman's choice. Good. Let me give a counter argument to that now. Some may say that abortion should be legal because it is a woman's choice. But what about the right of the unborn child? Question mark. That's a counter argument. I am making the choice of a woman sound not so important anymore because we have to now consider the right of the unborn child. You think you understand what I'm saying? I hope so. Comparisons are always good comparing one thing to the other than any rhetorical questions. You know what rhetorical questions are. Those questions that do not deserve an answer, but it's implied what the answer is. Then you have your question and answering, which is called hypophora. Hypophora. However you pronounce that. Uh, so what is it? What is this here? It's just a rhetorical question, but a question an answer is given after the question is asked. For example, can a logical person possibly disagree with this argument? Question. If I had ended that there and not replied to it, that would have been a rhetorical question. But if I go on to say, can a logical person possibly disagree with this argument? The obvious answer is no. When I go on to answer that, it's no longer a rhetorical question, but it's now a hypophoria. This here comes every single year, every year in the... Um, CAPE exam, the CAPE communication studies, and students don't know the difference between rhetorical questions and hypophoria. If you know somebody who's doing CAPE, tag them in this video and so they can know the difference between those two because it comes every year in the CAPE exam. And you're going to be marked, I have some little notes there in expression, you are going to be marked for clear sentences so i'm going to advise you to write short sentences because people can generally focus well on short sentences uh, i am going to also tell you to link your words use linking words where you're having in addition as a result consequently and things like that to begin in closing link your statement that you're writing you have to have paragraphing you have to have paragraphing and, of course, your subject and verb agreement must always be intact, right? Spelling and punctuation, you must be consistent with your tense. If you're going to choose to sound the entire essay in past tense, then do the entire essay in past tense. Present tense, do the entire essay in present tense. Then we have the conclusion. So, you have written this brilliant essay that requires full score. Rarely that happens, but you've written an excellent essay. And now you have to conclude. Do not fall prey to the terrible writing skill where people do not put conclusions. You must have a conclusion to everything you write, just like you must have an introduction to everything you write. What the conclusion will entail is for you to generally give a summary to what you have just written. So the summary to what you have just written is generally going to repeat the topic, the main points to what you're arguing, and to give a brief close to what you said. So what is it? If the topic was about abortion, you are now going to show why you said abortion should be illegal in a nutshell. Do not give a new point, do not give any new numbers, do not give any new evidence. Just give a conclusion, a summary of what you would have listed above in the essay. And come to the ending with a nice rhetorical question. One that makes the reader think a little bit about what you have said. So now we are developing our essay. Let's take, for instance, this question that was in the May-June 2009 paper. So, it says, watching television rather than reading is the best way to broaden their knowledge, for children to broaden their knowledge. So, what does that mean? 
First of all, you have to have an understanding of what the essay is asking you to do. This essay is asking you to say whether television is best or reading is best to broaden the knowledge of a, of a child, to broaden the knowledge of a child. So, which one is best? Education through TV or education through reading? And that is what you have to focus on. So, you have to have an understanding first, and then you go on to write. So, when developing the essay, the essay will require you to spend a little bit time on planning this essay. When you go to the CXC exams, there will be a box that says you may make notes here. Whatever you write in that box will not be assessed by the marker, but you may make some notes there. What I want you to do is to make a table, a large table, and say for or against that topic, whatever the topic is, and write points, as many points as you can, on either side or both sides. So if you want to write three points on one side, because you can easily think of three points to support that for side, and three points against that side, go ahead and do that. If you can only find three points on one side, that's obviously the side you're going to write the essay on, whichever side you have the more points for, not the one that you like the most. And by the way, I think I should say it. There's no right or wrong side. There's no side that you have to write on because CXC wants you to write on that side. Uh -uh. It doesn't have a right or wrong side. It all depends on how you explain that side. You think you understand what I'm saying? It all depends on how you explain in your essay whatever side you're arguing on. So there's no right or wrong side. Back to what I was saying now. I'm so tangential. Man. I was going off. Anyway, make a table, put three points down, and always try to find one point at least on the other side to the argument. That one point would be an example to use in your counter argument. So here, for instance, I'm writing a point. I'm writing three points down as to why TV is not so good when compared to books. All right, good. As you can see here, this here is nicely put. So uh, this is gonna guide me now when I'm writing my essay, what I should be putting in the various paragraphs. When you do this before you write the essay, it will help you to move smoothly from paragraph to paragraph and not have to think very, very long. When I pass some English exam room, I see some people thinking, thinking, watching the roof, watching all over the place. I don't know what you are looking for. In English, you're supposed to be writing all the time. Write, write, write. This way, it will put your mind at ease because you've already known, you've already written the points you're arguing on. Now you just have to write the full paragraph supporting those points. So quickly, I'm recapping this now. Try to do this developing of the essay in the format of a table. The table will allow you to put three points for whichever side you are going to focus the argument on and at least one point on the other side for your counter argument purposes. So let's go on to writing this essay now. I'm going to give you an example of an essay that we can develop as a result of these points here. Mind you, it's not the best example, but it's an example nonetheless aiming to give you some good ideas of how you go on to write your essay. So here I'm giving you a sample. You can go ahead and pause this video now and read through this for yourself. What I'm going to do, I'm going to read it through now and explain it to you while I read as to what I'm doing at various levels. So pause this. I'm giving you some seconds to pause this. So here is your sample. I'm starting to read now. In today's society, many children spend countless hours watching television rather than being engrossed in reading. People often ask whether reading or watching television is better for building knowledge. This piece of writing will clearly show why reading will always be better of a source for knowledge than watching television. To begin, 
Reading is the act of converting written text to spoken or silent words with the intent of understanding and comprehending the written text. What I've done there is give you a definition. Remember I told you that's one the technique you can start with? Good. So that is there. So that's another that's one technique ticked off in the book. Excellent. This shows, this goes to show that the main purpose of reading is to build knowledge through learning of new words, writing styles, building comprehension skills, and the use of imagination. These skills are not evenly remotely used when watching television. Reading, especially in school setting, is of paramount importance when a growing child is learning new words or building vocabulary, which is basically learning new words, or building comprehension skills. So, that's a paragraph. I'm explaining why this reading is so important. Right? It's, re it's important because we we're able to do what? Build our vocabulary, improve our communication skills, and use our imagination. So, I'm giving a little justification there. Then I go on to say, most pertinently, a television program, oftentimes a movie, has a storyline based out, played out in full. Sadly, an individual viewing such program fail to use or develop any sort of reasoning or critical thinking skills since it is all placed before their eyes. Is it therefore any wonder why our children have poor reasoning and critical thinking skills? Question. See that? That's a rhetorical question. I am saying because they watch so much TV, their critical skills, their critical thinking skills are poor. It doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be some factual something. I'm just writing and developing this argument to support the side I'm on. Reading causes an individual to question themselves about what they are reading, whether consciously or subconsciously. According to a Japanese study, to a Japanese study by Dr. Lee in 2012, there is no Japanese study by Dr. Lee. I am just giving you an example. I am just giving you a fabricated fact. Because it's structured in such a way, you will ought to believe it because it sounds factual. That's what you're required to do. Reading promotes brain development by enhancing cognitive or, or cognition, focus, and concentration. Sounds right, right? When you write your facts in such a way, even if they're lying, even if they're false, it sounds believable. This ultimately leads to improvements in IQ scores over a period of time. Such skills are only forcefully killed by the lazy act of watching television. <laughs> so I could have given some stats here. Let me say, I could have said something to the effect that research shows that three of every nine children who watches the television is not able to comprehend, is not able to focus, is not able to develop their cognitive abilities. That's some stats. Don't make it sound as though it's too fancy or it's too extravagant. Keep it on the minimum. Three out of nine, uh, four out of ten. Don't make it sound nine out of ten. 9.9 .9 out of 10, uh, no, keep it minimum, right? Furthermore, many may argue, this is a counter-argument, so pay attention. Remember, earlier I said the strongest point would be X, right? Let's look at this here. Furthermore, some may argue that watching television can promote learning through educational programs. But let us be real here. What percentage of the shows on our television is educational. The vast majority is deeply rooted in violence, sexual explicit content, and programs that give or indulges in a false sense of reality. 
this can be potentially dangerous to a growing child and that child cannot possibly differentiate between fiction and reality. How will this broaden their knowledge? It obviously will not. See that there? Brilliant use of rhetorical question and question and answering. Very good example, to be honest. And then I close now. Don't write too long. So I, I, you see there are three paragraphs supporting the different views I have on this particular side to the argument. And then I now go and, I'm going to conclude. In closing, reading promotes cognitive development through improvements in reasoning and comprehension skills. These skills cannot be adequately developed with a lazy act of watching television. After reading this, can a logically thinking person possibly disagree? Or should we make a movie out of this text? <laughs> Brilliant use of um, rhetorical question there. It really cements the argument as to the side you're on. So let me just recap this essay. Introduction, three paragraphs for your body, and then your conclusion. Right? And the conclusion is going to just generally sum up what you have presented above there. You are not pre-presenting any new point. You're just summing up what you have already talked about. And that's all the time we have. This video, again, was sponsored by Avinash Ramsey Waka, a student of mine. Uh, you can email me detail. You can email me for details on how you can also be a sponsor of a subsequent video. I hope this was good for you. I hope that you have learned. Uh, I wanted to make this as brief as possible. However, that did not happen. So I do hope you did spend the time to read it nonetheless. Congratulations if you made it through the end of this video. There will be other links in the description to other aspects of the English A exam that will help you prepare for the CSEC Paper 2 English A exams, whichever year you're writing. That's all the time you have today. Goodbye.